Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. Will Meta, earlier known as Facebook, ever change its ways? The world's largest digital monopoly and social media platform has been abused, misused, and manipulated for political gains at the expense of the interests of the people at large. I'm very happy and very privileged to have with me here Sophie Jha. She is, used to work with Facebook earlier till September 2020, worked two years, and now a whistleblower, a data scientist who called out Facebook and wrote famously that you were very perturbed that you had blood on your hands because this social media platform, this digital monopoly had been misused to spread lies, falsehoods, which had actually resulted in the deaths of several people. If for the benefit of our viewers, Please tell us, after working in the fake engagement and the, stamps, and the spam team of Facebook for around two years, what was it that made you speak out and say, enough is enough, I can't take it anymore. My personal loyalty to the company headed by Mr. Mark Zuckerberg is less important than my loyalties to the world around me. Yeah. Absolutely, and thank you very much for having me. And so, so, so I just want to start with some clarifications. So, 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 so misinformation and the spread of false news, these are, def these are important subjects. They are also not what I worked on, which is the, the use of false accounts and identities to spread, to, to spread messages. These are different areas that sound similar. An example of misinformation would be, suppose if, a po if someone says, the moon is made out of cheese. It, is, it does not matter if they are a, a politician, a 10-year-old child, an elderly pensioner, um, um, a dog pretending to be a human on the internet. This is misinformation. It is, it is incorrect and hopefully people can recognize that. If I set up 10,000 fake personas on social media and say the moon is made out of rock, there is nothing wrong with this statement except I am using false personas to say this in the same way that there is nothing wrong with voting for either the Congress or the BJP or the app. But if you create thousands of false personas for ban uh, of bandits and stuff bandit boxes with them, that is very wrong. This, uh, and, and, so, and, so this is and so this is a separate problem from misinformation and false news. It, 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 it has, and it's, it, it's commonly believed that fa false accounts are commonly used to spread uh, misinformation. In my personal experience, that's, not, that's generally not very correct in the sense that most misinformation is sadly spread by real people who genuinely believe it, and most, and, 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 and most fake accounts that I've seen have been spreading political, for instance, in the realm of politics, have been spreading political messages that are within the realm of typical political speech and not misinformation. And they are both severe problems, but also separate problems. And so going back to your actual question, which I'm sorry for taking the time to... No problem. You've clarified the difference between misinformation and disinformation, which is propaganda, which is deliberately propagated for a particular purpose, a political purpose, or some other purpose. Yes, to come back to the question. Yes, to come back to the question, I worked at Facebook from J January 2018 to September 2020. And so, I, and so I eventually became a whistleblower. And everything that you have heard me speak about publicly, including in India, including my work finding IT, cells across the political spectrum in India, these were not part of my actual job. They, they were work that was close enough to it that I, that I got away with doing it, but it was work I was doing in my spare time because I believed it was important. So, 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 for, some pe so for some people, the work that they do at the company is everyday things and they become invisible because they see something that they, can, that they, that they can, what, believe is not right. My past was very unusual because 
when I found things that were not right, I tried to fix them within the company first for, for, for two years. And it was only be after being fired by the company and being, I, I even offered to stay on free of pay, um, but, but Facebook was not winning. And it was only after then that I became a whistleblower after I had exhausted my options to fix it within the system. And I, I, I had a similar tact. And, and even then, when I became a whistleblower, for instance, in India, I did not publicly release the names of the MP involved at first because I believed it was my responsibility to work with India's government to offer, to offer the documentation and my testimony to the Lok Sabha. And, and to their credit, the Lok Sabha Committee on IT voted unanimously to, 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 to invite my testimony across party lines. However, the Lok Sabha Speaker, Mr. Om Birla, Yes. Refused permission. Let's come to India, the Lok Sabha, a little later. I want you to take a few steps back. Between 2018 and 2020, when you looked into fake engagements and you, you did find out, you uncovered widespread political manipulation, abusive political manipulation, networks that were aimed at targeting and harassing political opponents of the ruling regime. Now, you uncovered evidence pertaining to 25 countries, including several authoritarian regimes. Now, I have a long list, Azerbaijan, India, USA, Dominican Republic, Mexico, El Salvador, Ecuador, Bolivia, Paraguay, Argentina, Italy, Poland, Ukraine, Albania, Bulgaria, Turkey, Iraq, Tunisia, Afghanistan, Mongolia, Myanmar, Indonesia, Philippines, South Korea, etc. Now, in which of these countries did you find that Facebook had been most, uh, uh, which, which would be the most egregious examples of misuse of Facebook to shape public discourse, influence political preferences? So the most egregious cases that they found in which Facebook itself was abused came in two countries, which were Honduras and Azerbaijan. In India, what was egregious was not the size and, and scale of the abuse, but rather Facebook's rea own reaction to it, namely that it agreed to take action, but changed their mind as soon as they discovered that a member of the Lok Sabha w was, uh, was responsible. In Azerbaijan, it's officially a democracy in the same way that North Korea is a democratic people's republic. In 2013, they accidentally released election results a day before the actual election. And so, and so, and so in Azerbaijan, the, the ruling party, it is effectively a one-party state, and the ruling party takes on a role similar to the, to the Communist Party in China. But in Azerbaijan, the ruling party set up tens of thousands of fake assets, so that every time an Azeri opposition figure, or even, in, or even uh, or international news reporting in Azeri, they reported something on the opposition, they would immediately be deluged by hundreds or thousands of comments about how the government is great, the opposition was bad, and etc. Each month there were perhaps three million comments being created, each uniquely typed out by people. There was some repetitiveness because if you write three million comments, you, you, there's only so many ways to say the same thing. But it showed a very large amount of effort and scale. and. and in terms of the harassment, and th th these were people who coordinated the activity in, in Facebook work messaging groups with names like first day shift, second day shift. They were directly tied to the ruling party from the start, and and, and they would start each morning at 9 a.m. in the morning, stop for a lunch break at 1 p.m. and stop and, 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 and return in the afternoon and pitch out in the evening. They only worked weekdays, not holidays. Such as such as New Year's or Novruz, which is the which is the I think P Persian New Persian New Year, and and they and the, and they also stopped temporarily when when Azari non-essential governmental employees were furloughed due to the COVID situation. Apparently, governmental trolls were considered non-essential, and and and. In, in Honduras, there was a similar case. Honduras is more democratic than Azerbaijan. You're talking about the President Juan Orlando Hernandez and, and how yes. it was all coordinated yes. to support him. Yes, it was coordinated by his own page administrator who had special access to make statements on his behalf. 
because when you see on Facebook on the Facebook page Narendra Modi or something, that is not Prime Minister Mo Modi typing out the posts himself. It is someone he and his organization trusts who has access to make those statements usually. And so, and in, in the case of President Juan Orlando Hernandez, it was his own page administrator that was also, without hiding at all, internally to Facebook, running hundreds of fake assets to support, the, pretending to be endurance to support the president. And, and since then, his party has lost re-election and he has been arrested and extradited to the United States where he's, fa he's facing trial in New York City about smuggling drugs to the U.S. to finance his presidential campaign. So I, I hope this, I hope Andiras is moving in a positive direction okay. with this. Okay, Sophie, before I come to India, let me go back to September 2020, when, to use your own words, you were sacked or fired from Facebook, now known as Meta. He, they offered you a, a, a kind of a severance package of 64,000 American dollars, presumably to buy your silence, non-disparagement agreement. And the day you left the company, you posted a 7,800 word long message where among other things you talked about the blood on your hands. And after that happened, Facebook contacted your web hosting service, your domain registrar, and, and, and tried to stop the world from knowing what you had written. Could you recount what exactly happened at that period of time? Yes, absolutely. So, 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 so the severance package I, I was offered by Facebook came with a number of exit stipulations, <coughs> including a non-disparagement agreement. My personal belief is that this is a standard departure agreement that Facebook offers to all its employees. I don't believe I, don't believe I was exceptional in that regard. The, the number was 63,000 something hundred, which runs to 64,000, which I've related for simplicity. And I, I, I turned them down because I was, because I had was already it made up my mind by that point that I would be speaking out publicly at some point, though that was not what I told them, of course. And to be clear, I did sign a non-disparagement agreement when I joined the company. There was no way around that, but I preferred to break one agreement over two. Um, I dislike breaking agreements, and I mean, I do it when I have to, but it is not my preference. And, and so at Facebook, there is an internal tradition that when you leave the company, you, you, write, you write up a message with a picture of your employee badge. This is called internally a badge post. Oftentimes it's, it, oftentimes it's very trite. It's like, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to work with you. I'm going to hear you as my next journey. It was a pleasure, everyone. Goody, goody stuff. Yes, and sometimes it, but sometimes it is more thoughtful and incisive. Um, and, and because, of course, they are leaving the company, the company cannot threaten to fire them because what will they do? they're already leaving the company, but they can take the posts down internally. And so some, some employees figured, they began to, some employees before my time, they decided that, okay, I'm leaving the company. I want to say something which might be controversial. I don't want Facebook to take it down. So, so what they decided was that they would also host a copy, password protected, on their personal website and then post the link with the password on the internal post so that even if Facebook takes, took it down, employees could share the, the link and password to one another. So this would be intended not for the broader world, but for Facebook employees to see. And so th that was the approach that I took when I, was, when I published my departure memo. I was not expecting it to be leaked. I was very naive, quite frankly. I, I stayed up all night from midnight to 8 a.m. in the morning writing 7,800 words and as every reporter can who's done that can tell you, the result may not be perfect. And, uh, and, and then I, I understand that it was, and so it was, and so it was, it, it, and so I posted this an hour or so before I was supposed to be locked out of the systems. So I did not see most of the internal reaction. But I was, t but, uh, but they, I mean, the first reactions did not even read it. It was just people who saw th that I was leaving the company and said, "We're so sorry to see you go," or etc. Because people are usually polite. But, but I, I was, I was, I was, I was called later that evening. Facebook had taken down, the, had taken it down internally within their systems. They also wanted me to take it down from my website, 
I told them that they would take down the website if they restored it to, on their internal systems. This was the evening that I was, that, that I was fired. They, and they told me they'd consider it and get back to me. And the next thing I heard was the next day at noon, in which, the, in which I was told by my, web, by my web hosting server provider that my website had been taken down by Facebook for, I think, uh, an authorized documentation or something like that. And, and which I'm sure the lawyers were very busy that week. And, and it, it was still the best $5 a month I ever spent. But um, and later I heard that, th that my, that my dom web domain had been taken down as well. I had only registered them several, uh, several weeks prior for this purpose. Okay. Now, predictably, Facebook reacted to you. Their spokesperson said, and they've said it over and over again to dozens of media outlets, that they fundamentally disagree with your characterization of Meta stroke Facebook's priorities, efforts to root out abuse, etc, etc. And then they say, we aggressively go after abuse around the world. We have specialized teams focused on this work uh, and, and uh, our teams have investigated and publicly shared our findings and we are continuously detecting and taking action against spam, fake engagement, etc, etc, etc. So, they want to say that, look, you know, uh, we are not so bad at the end of the day. And you know, a lot of people here were also, I should say, um, when they read your own statement, where you argued that Facebook stroke meta is not acting out of malice, but rather in a slapdash, haphazard manner. And they're more concerned about their self-preservation and their public relations. So in a sense, you're almost exonerating uh, Mr. Zuckerberg's company and uh, Ms. Sheryl Sandberg's company that they, they were not that bad. I mean, I mean they, were, they were not very nice, but they were not that bad as well. You, you're kind of balancing the discourse. So, they want to re so there are two really real parts to this. The first, Facebook's response, and second, my opinion on Mr. Zuckerberg. And so I want to tackle those separately. Okay. So the first, uh, Facebook's response, that's a very Facebook response in which they look like they are contradicting me and saying that I'm wrong. But if you look carefully, they are not actually answering the question. They are making statements that dance around it that look like they contradict me but actually do not. I'm going to use an analogy. So at home, I live with my girlfriend, and suppose I am back in the United States, and she asks me, Sophie, I see dirty dishes in the sink. Did you wash the dishes last night? And I respond by saying, I fundamentally disagree with your assertion that I do not wash dishes. I have washed dishes over f f 50 times in the last year. I've invested, f I have invested $100 in cleaning supplies and new dish soap and cleaning uh, equipment and, uh, and publicly announced it each time to, for your awareness. Washing dishes is a very difficult question and it will never be fully solved. And then, so you divert attention from Answering the question, did you wash the dishes exactly, last night? Exactly. My gro and, and, if, and if anyone actually said that to their spouse, their spouse would reasonably be upset at them. But when it comes to social media, it, it, the, the press tends to accept that for some reason. And, 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 and as to the other point, as to my personal judgment of, of Mr. Zuckerberg, I think it's important to remember that Facebook is a company and the goal of, of businesses and corporations is to make money. We do not expect Dow Chemical, which, which acquired Union Carbide, to repay the poor people of Bhopal out of the goodness of their hearts. They could do so if they wanted to, but they will not. We don't expect Philip Morris, the tobacco cigarette company, to, to, re, to reimburse the Indian government and Ayushman Bharat, the healthcare system, every single time an Indian gets sick with lung cancer. The idea is almost ludicrous. Neither will, I mean, the, the goal of corporations is to make money, not to preserve democracy, or preserve Indian society. And, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm interrupting you, but please complete, no, please complete what you were saying first. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and so I think it's important to be fair. Because, like, I have, I have six specific concerns with Mr. Zuckerberg, but I want to distinguish them as him causing harms by acting against his own interests 
and of making money rather than he is bad because he's more interested in making money than protecting democracy. Because if you're criticizing companies for that, you're not criticizing Facebook, you're criticizing capitalism, which to be fair, many people have done, but it's fairly difficult to get right. Well, thank you so much, Sophie. At this juncture, we conclude the first part of our interview with whistleblower, former employee of Facebook, Sophie Zhang. She has several more things to say. She's going to talk about her experiences in India. She's going to talk about her personal life. She's going to talk about what needs to be done. Can Facebook or Meta reform itself? Or is regulatory intervention the only way forward? Stay with us. Watch the second part of this interview. Share this interview. Subscribe to NewsClick. And thank you very much for being with us.